Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lost can be found. This video is a guide to ruby farming in Dragalia Lost as of December 2020. Version 2.0 introduced some major increases as far as rupee costs, but also opened up the means to obtain lots and lots of rupees each and every day if you know which quests to play and prioritize. The purpose of this video is to walk you through how I manage my stamina and gather wings to earn 5 million rupees per day. Let's start with some basics. First up, if you aren't aware, one of the most essential dragons to obtain for any Tregalia Lost player is the Gold Fafnir. You can redeem up to 20 copies of the little guy from the special section of the Void Battle Treasure Trade in exchange for 4 Void Seeds a copy, and it's definitely worth getting all 20 so you can max and bind 4 copies of this dragon. Each max copy you equip increases rupee intake by 50%, and since they stack together, that means you can get plus 200% rupees per quest if you've equipped 4 Max Unbound Gold Fafnirs. In addition, this even works in co-op for any of your backline adventurers on your team page, whether they actually enter the battle themselves or not. Gold Fafnirs are part of what makes the next basic tip work. Prioritize harder content when trying to farm rupees not Avenue to Fortune. I see a lot of players making the mistake of thinking the Avenue to Fortune is the best place to get rupees. This is true early on, but standard difficulty and above for High Dragons and the Agito Uprising becomes preferred for rupees as your power level increases and you're able to solo and auto that content, especially with Gold Fafnir's equipped. Even expert void battles on double drops tend to be better than Avenue to Fortune. Not only can you get rupees by exchanging void leaves and seeds for them, but you'll also pick up other valuable materials and augments along the way. That's really the core takeaway of this video. Although Avenue to Fortune may look like it's the best place to farm rupees, it usually isn't. Now, let's get into the weeds on how to earn 5 million a day. This is a rough number. You can get more or less depending on what you put in. 3 of the 5 million is from spending stamina, so solo play, and 2 million is from using gather wings for co-op play. Let's start with the stamina. Every day in Dragalia Lost, you have a fixed pool of stamina to work with. Stamina recharges at 1 per 6 minutes under normal conditions, so from natural regeneration alone, that means we all get 240 stamina per day. A second source of stamina is the Halidum, which generates 1 honey tea every 30 minutes. In other words, that's an extra 48 stamina per day. Then there are daily endeavors. If you collect from the rupee mines once a day, you get a quality honey worth 20 stamina. If you check into your alliance, you get 2 quality honeys worth 40. And if you clear any 5 quests, you get 1 exquisite honey worth 30. Besides these normal endeavors, usually whatever special event is happening will provide rewards as well. At the time of recording, the Princess Connect raid is live, and that gives 5 basic honey for clearing 3 raid quests, meaning another 50 stamina right there. All in all, the daily haul ends up totaling to 428 stamina. Now, for most players, a good chunk of this is going to be offset by daily quests that I'd encourage you all to try and complete once or twice to obtain daily bonuses. Some more hardcore players may forego these quests entirely, but the Dragalia team has a way of bringing back materials we may have thought were useless and suddenly shining a spotlight on them, so I'd still say it's worth it to do these dailies. This includes things like one Avenue to Fortune per day, which itself grants rupees, one clear of Avenue to Power, the boss battle for the current raid at least once, one elemental ruins clear on expert, two dragon trials clears on master, and perhaps a half dozen or so draconic essence clears of campaign quests if let's say a double drops half stamina promotion is active. Adding up everything for these daily quests, the total cost in stamina is roughly 145. If you subtract this allotment for dailies from your total stamina income for the day, that leaves you with 283 excess stamina, which you're free to do with whatever you like. And how players use this stamina is honestly what I'd consider the single biggest determinant of overall progression for a player's account. That's actually a huge amount of resources to work with, but there are many players who will just let their stamina meter cap out, sitting at full the entire day. 
And ultimately, there is absolutely nothing wrong with that since Dragalia Lost is just a game after all. But for those of you out there who want to know how or why some players have stronger accounts, it essentially boils down to being frugal with time management and using all of your excess stamina as well as gather wings with a sense of purpose. For this video, our purpose is to accumulate rupees, so I'll be devoting the entire allotment of 283 stamina toward that mission. But depending on what else is going on in Dragalia Lost at the time, it's also reasonable that some days you'll be doing other stuff, like let's say clearing out the event compendia. The main thing is having an objective in mind. As far as rupees go, as mentioned before, soloing or autoing High Dragon Trials or the Agito Uprising are the best methods to farm. At the standard level and above, these quests grant 100,000 rupees per clear. By using Gold Fafnirs, you can turn this into as much as 300,000 per clear instead. Technically, standard is most efficient for pure rupee income since it only costs 20 stamina, while Expert costs 30 and Master and Legend cost 40. But realistically, I know most players want a mix of both rupees and materials a lot of the time. Therefore, as an example, I've shown how you might allocate your 280 stamina in a typical day. Let's say you do 6 standard quests, 4 expert ones, and 1 master clear. I've also scaled the rupee income since I know not everyone out there can clear this content with 4 gold Fafnirs. For illustration purposes, let's say you can clear standard just fine with 4, but for expert you can only use 3, and for master you can only use 2. Meaning your rupees per clear is 300,000 for standard, 250,000 for expert, and 200,000 for master. In general, if you're having trouble with this, high dragons are easier than Agito because you can use high dragon bane weapons to solo or auto reliably. In total, that 280 stamina spent on doing either Akito or High Dragon Quest amassed a whopping 3 million rupees. And that number could even go up if you wanted. Let's say you spend all of your stamina on standard instead. That'd net you 4,200,000 rupees from your excess daily stamina alone. And if High Dragons or Agito are just too daunting for you right now, Void Battles aren't a bad option either. If you focus on Double Drop, Expert Void Dragons, or Chimeras, you can net approximately 250,000 rupees per clear on average. This is because Void Leaves and Seeds can be exchanged to rupees at a really cost-effective rate. Void Battles do have more variance involved because you're relying on getting Void Seeds, which are obtained randomly, and exchanged for AD Leaves, but this still equals 2,225,000 rupees per day in expectation. If you spent all that stamina on Avenue to Fortune instead, you'd only earn around 1.6 million rupees. The lesson is that the game is actively incentivizing you to clear its harder content. It's true that special events sometimes surpass even what you can get from High Dragons and the Agito Uprising. Triple Drop Avenue to Fortune and Triple Drop Expert Void Battles are examples where it's possible to get even more rupees on average, so you might feel tempted to save everything for those special events. But even then, there are some drawbacks. Avenue to Fortune doesn't drop useful quest materials like augments, and Void Battles, while great on triple drops, are still high in variance. Getting unlucky is a real possibility compared to the Agito Uprising and the High Dragons. Still, I do think you'd want to save some amount of honey and ashes for even more lucrative farming opportunities, including the triple void drops. Having said all of that, so far I haven't counted any of the honey or ashes obtained from the void shop every month, login bonuses, or our typical mid-month defensive and onslaught events in this video. So I think even with spending a little honey per day, we're still able to accumulate a nice savings based on what I've presented. I've also not really included other sources of rupee income like mines, dailies, or blazon boxes in this video, purely focusing on the massive amount you can get from endgame content. But it really does all add up over time. In any case, that's 3 million from stamina or solo play down. Now let's talk about the other 2 million you can get by doing co-op. Once again, the same basic principles apply. Gather wings regenerate at a rate of 1 per hour, so each day players earn a total of 24. In addition, events sometimes have daily endeavors, which give you extra wings in the form of ashes. For example, the current raid event gives you 6 regular ashes as long as you collect 100 blazons per day. Now, let's go over some of the dailies you'll spend these wings on. 
First up, I suggest doing two clears of Imperial Onslaught on Master Difficulty. This will cost you four wings in total. Second, you're going to want to do the Nightmare Battle of the Raid for its Grand Bounty at a cost of two wings. And third, you'll want to do a small number of regular raid battles for the sake of your daily endeavors. I'd say how many you do each day will vary between one run and two, depending on whether or not you unlock an EX run. So, I estimate the cost spent on this at three wings. Some days it'll only be two, while others it'll be four. In total, that means you'll earn roughly 30 wings per day while spending around nine, leaving you 21 in excess. Just like with stamina, you're free to spend this how you choose. Maybe you're still working on crafting void weapons or chimera tech, in which case there's nothing wrong with focusing your efforts there. Perhaps you really like the raid event or you want to make a big push toward Omega on a particular day. But if your focus is just on rupees, once again, I think your best option is going to be Agito and High Dragon quests. As before, for most players, I'm going to assume you do a mix of difficulties since materials also matter. In this case, let's say you complete four standard clears at a cost of two wings each, three expert clears at a cost of three wings each, and one master clear at a cost of four wings. That's 21 excess gather wings spent right there. Since it's co-op, I'm also going to assume you don't use a gold Fafnir on your lead units, but you do use one on all of your backline adventurers, meaning every clear earns you exactly 250,000 rupees. In total, these eight clears amount to a clean 2 million. And just like before, expert void dragons and chimeras aren't a bad alternative if it's too much trouble to tackle this harder content in co-op. Even if you don't need the rupees right away, to complete everything in Dragalia Lost, you're going to want billions, so it's worth putting in the efforts. As an aside, I'd add that there is also some nuance here between raid events and other event types. Raid events tend to drain wings more while facility, onslaught, and defensive events expend stamina. The last two types of events also give tons of honey though, to more than offset what is spent, opening up your options to farm even further, or just stockpile and save up for the future. I'll also note that if the amount of wings I suggested spending on the raid seem small, that is intentional. I don't think the 50k rupee bonus from the current raid event is actually worth getting. I think it's just a distraction since it's no longer Wormite. I prefer to stop at 200 blazons per day since that has the last worthwhile daily endeavor, Eldwater, at least in my opinion. And well, that pretty much wraps things up. 3 million using excess stamina, 2 million using excess wings. 5 million rupees per day total. It may seem like a lot, but you can definitely burn through rupees fast in the latest version of Dragalia Lost. And that also makes it important to consider how to spend your rupees. I'd strongly recommend prioritizing Agito weapons and stopping once you have a weapon at 4 unbinds, refined with its worm print slot unlocked. Doing all of that costs 15 million, so about 3 days of effort. You should prioritize weapons you plan to use in your solo and co-op teams to make farming the content repeatedly easier in the future. Having some Agita weapons with no unbinds is also often good enough for soloing, as long as you have at least one strong weapon per element. And high dragon weapons sometimes do work better on AI, but I think they're too expensive to really suggest. As another rule of thumb, going past 4 unbinds is usually way more costly than it's worth at least until you have nothing else to work on. I would also suggest you only unbind a weapon 5 times if you specifically want to unlock its weapon bonus, since that's the minimum needed to do so. In the case of void weapons, you may also want to go for a 6th unbind in order to unlock the High Dragon Bane ability for that weapon element combination. The later unbinds aren't so bad for void and chimera weapons, but they're extremely costly for High Dragon and Agito weapons. For High Dragon and Agito weapons, unbinds 5 through 8 cost 7.5 million rupees each, and the weapon bonus costs 10 million. The 9th unbind and 2nd refine that released with Legend difficulty cost fewer rupees, but they're also very low priority and mostly cosmetic. For my closing thoughts on rupee farming, there are two main points I want to convey. First, farming rupees definitely snowballs. The more rupees you get, the better weapons you can craft, the more bonuses you can unlock. This in turn gives you stronger teams, 
who can more easily solo and auto hard content with even more gold Fafnirs, allowing your future rupee acquisitions to be that much easier. Honestly, things are rough at first until you get about 4 Agita weapons per element. Once you have that though, things begin to go downhill relatively quickly if you remain persistent. I truly think the reason the rupee costs are so high in version 2.0 of Dragalia Lost is to continuously encourage players to participate in endgame content, because by doing that content repeatedly, you genuinely can acquire a lot of rupees. My final point is simply this. I know this way of playing Dragalia Lost isn't for everyone. A lot of players don't want to micromanage their day around Dragalia Lost, and I totally get that. At the end of the day, most content is accessible whether or not you craft and complete everything or not. If you're looking to minimize your screen time, one method I like to use to discipline myself is to log in twice per day. Stamina and Wings both cap after 12 hours, so you can stay on top of both with as few as two logins daily. I usually do one at 7am before work and another at 7pm to wind down my day. Or if I stayed up late, I might do one right at reset, which is midnight for me, and another login during my lunch break at noon. This is probably more than most people would want to put into Dragalia Lost, but I guess I am a Dragalia Lost YouTuber after all. Anyways y'all, that is pretty much going to do it for today. I hope this video has been helpful and that you've learned something new about rupees. If you have any other tips for rupee farming, please share them in the comments below. Otherwise everyone, thank you as always for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.